Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Audible. So I remember watching the first episode of Community live when it premiered back in 2009, and I really liked it. I thought it was a promising sitcom pilot that I had no idea would go on to become one of the most unique comedies in the history of network television. But that's maybe a little hard to see in the pilot episode, and that's what I really want to focus on this week, the origins of Community. What works in the pilot, what doesn't, and most importantly, I want to discuss how TV used to really grow and be able to change on the fly, in a way that I think many streaming shows don't often get a chance to these days. One thing that community creator Dan Harmon will admit right away when talking about the early episodes of the series is how much he was trying to make a good, but also very broadly appealing, network sitcom. Harmon cut his teeth on edgy internet comedy, but he also had a lot of respect for rock-solid, old-school sitcoms. Cheers and Taxi especially are ones that he consistently singles out as inspirations behind the show, with Harmon saying, If you pitched a show about a bunch of people hanging out in a bar on paper, there's a really depressing element to that. But the thing that they share is that they're all hanging out in this bar together. From that stuff comes this really, really clear feeling of family because of the environment, without depressing the hell out of people too much, sort of symbolizes the fact that the world wasn't necessarily designed for us to feel good about ourselves. And that's something that has to happen through us and through the relationships between us and the choices we make. Definitely Cheers and Taxi are two really, really huge ones that I think of as having achieved television excellence and sort of aspire to in my head. For his setting, he decided to loosely base things on his own experience of taking a Spanish class at a community college in Los Angeles and making a few friends he never would have had otherwise in a study group. I think both the real life and Cheers and Taxi influences are really clear in this pilot, probably even more so than they became as the show went on. Because while there is certainly still a heightened comedic tone to this episode, it feels far more grounded than what community would become, for better or worse. On its own, I think this episode actually holds up surprisingly well. It's funny, clever, and does a great job at giving everyone in the cast a chance to shine. When taken in the context of the rest of the series though, the pilot is a classic case of a TV show that hasn't quite figured itself out yet, leaning on character traits that would quickly be de-emphasized or abandoned altogether in later episodes. A good example is probably Troy, whose entire personality in this episode is defined by his high school football career, as well as how the episode mostly has him play off of Pierce instead of Abed. This is actually something Harmon is happy to admit, saying, We really thought that a fruitful relationship was going to be Pierce and Troy. Those guys were going to be like our Beavis and Butthead, kind of getting into hijinks and things. But this changed once the writers started seeing how well Donald Glover and Danny Pudi played off each other. But of course, the core focus of the episode is Joel McHale's Jeff Winger, definitely a character that they mostly had figured out right from the start. Sure, there is a few things I could nitpick. Like Jeff dresses really differently in this episode, I could never see season 3 Jeff showing up to the first day of school in both a blazer and sweatpants. According to Harmon, they were kinda going for a David Beckham look with him early on, but it didn't really work. Overall though, I think the pilot is very consistent with the character he would become. This is Jeff at his most selfish and amoral, leaning on Duncan to help him cheat his way through school, lying to Britta about being fluent in Spanish, and even getting the entire study group to tear each other apart just to try to get Britta to get drinks with him. For as network TV friendly as the pilot generally is, I'm sort of surprised by how much of a dirtbag it allows its leading man to be. I think that ultimately ends up being a really good choice too, because to sell the change that Jeff goes through throughout the run of the show, the audience really needs to see how far he's come. So even if making him this much of an asshole early on may turn off some viewers, in the long run it made for a much more rewarding show. That accessible network TV tone that this pilot has would eventually kind of go out the window entirely. While Harmon may have started with the intention to make a show like Cheers, it wasn't long until he couldn't stop himself from trying weird new things in the format. Eventually, that transformation would result in things like a Ken Burns documentary parody, a My Dinner with Andre homage, and a G.I. Joe episode. While there is definitely pop culture references in the pilot, like Abed continually bringing up The Breakfast Club, there's nothing here that suggests just how crazy this would get later on. Those first hints would really start to come just a few episodes into season 1 and come to the forefront in the first paintball episode. 
Now, I know a lot of people who feel like Community went too hard in this direction, and prefer the more grounded tone of Season 1. The general consensus, though, would probably be that the second or third season is the height of the series, and I would definitely put myself more in that camp. For me, as much as I find the early Season 1 episodes entertaining, and even the most self-indulgent episodes of Season 3 really funny, Season 2 is where it hits that perfect balance. But aside from Season 4, I find a lot of things to appreciate in every era of Community, definitely including these early ones. Together, they're more than a study group, they're a family. There is just one of every kind of you, isn't there? Getting back to the pilot, one thing I had forgotten about was just how much John Oliver's Duncan is in it. It's kind of strange to see now, honestly, since he wasn't a major focus of the series overall and he's far more known as a talk show host than an actor these days. But he probably gets more screen time than most the study group, and definitely more than the Dean. But when the study group is on screen, even when that characterization isn't 100% locked in yet, they really shine as an ensemble cast. It's the scenes around the study table that elevate this episode above your average network pilot. Abed is a bit more mannered here, with a slightly different speaking style than he would use for most of the show, but he's still got some of the best lines and is definitely very recognizably Abed. Chevy Chase may not be the most fun co-star in the world, according to like every story I've ever heard about Chevy Chase, but I think he was always rock solid as Pierce. He's prickly, self-aggrandizing, and clueless, traits that would only be amplified as the show went on. But I think to Chase's credit, he always managed to find the heart there. Even if Pierce wasn't always likable, he made a lot of sense as a character driven by pure insecurity. Shirley is basically Shirley right from the start too, as is Annie, and the Annie and Shirley comedic pairing is one found in the pilot that the show would actually return to over and over again. If there's one member of the cast who changed the most after this episode, it's Britta. Much like Sweet D and Always Sunny, and to a lesser extent Diane from Cheers, Britta goes from the smart, kind of boring, reasonable character to one that's completely weird and goofy in her own right. Gillian Jacobs is perfectly solid here playing the wise, moral conscious foil for Jeff. But in this pilot, that's kind of all she is. Later in the season, and especially by season two, Jacobs would shine a lot more getting to play weirder and more funny aspects of Britta's personality. Overall, this whole pilot brought me back to an era where it felt like TV shows got the time to really figure themselves out. They'd go on the air while the season was still in production and kind of sort out what worked and what didn't in real time. Now, with shorter streaming seasons and everything being written well in advance, a lot of TV shows don't really have the time to adjust the writing for what's working on screen until it's too late, and the show is already cancelled. In all the great 2000s NBC sitcoms, 30 Rock, Parks and Rec, The Office, and of course Community, you get to see the shows really assemble themselves as the first season goes along, and I think there's something special about that. The community pilot isn't as interesting or ambitious as the show would eventually become, but one thing that it does well is to create a rock solid foundation to build a story engine on, and that's something that I think is much, much harder than it probably looks. Oh, and if you're interested in exploring the NBC sitcom greats even more, I have something to recommend. The Office, The Untold Story of the Greatest Sitcom of the 2000s by Andy Green. This audiobook dives deep into the making of the show, and really gets into the nitty gritty of its creation in a way that nothing else has even attempted. And you can get it free right now on Audible. Look, I love Audible, it's no exaggeration to say that I use it every week. It's always been easy to recommend, but never more so than this holiday season because they have a great deal going on with 60% off your first three months. That's only $5.95 a month. Whatever genre you're into, whether it's a sci-fi novel, a self-help book, a podcast, or even original audio dramas, their catalog just gets bigger and bigger, so there's always something new to check out. Like their Plus catalog that goes far beyond audiobooks and features great audio content in all sorts of formats. So to get the holiday deal and 60% off your first three months and check out The Office The Untold Story for free, go to audible.com slash midnight or text midnight to 500-500. That's audible.com slash midnight or text midnight to 500-500. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started. 
because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes, too.